In this video we're going to be making ourselves a simple maze game where we have a character on the screen like this little bear that moves throughout a maze. He can collect some diamonds if he wants to and earn himself some points as you can see in the top left corner of that screen. When he hits the finish line it's going to take him to a second level. Okay, once in the second level he can collect diamonds again, earn himself some points and then finish the game completely. Okay, it's simple as that. So, let's get started in Game Maker. To begin with, we're going to load up some sprites. So let's click on the Pac-Man symbol at the top and load up our first sprite, which is the bear. Make sure you've got Remove Background checked. Click Open, and we're going to call it SPR underscore bear. Our next sprite, when we load it up, is going to be the diamond. We will remove the background again. Click Open. We'll call it SPR diamond. And our next sprite and our last one we removed the background is the checkered flag, it's the finish line. Okay, so we'll call that SPR finish. And finally our last sprite where we don't remove the background this time is the wall. So make sure remove background is unchecked. And we'll call it SPR wall. Um, in this game we have got a couple of sounds, so let's click on the sound icon load in some sounds. We want to get the diamond sound. So it's called SND diamond. And when we click on oh sorry when we collect a diamond, the sound of a diamond will be played. And the last sound is some background music. Pretty dodgy music, but we'll use it anyway. And we'll just call that uh, SND music. Click OK. Next thing we'll do is bring in some backgrounds for us to use. So up the top here we'll click on this little picture called create a background. Load up some backgrounds. We've got two worlds here. Let's load up world one. We'll just call it BG1. And we'll load up the second world. That's world two. So BG underscore two is the name of our second one. Okay, so we've now got all the sprites we need, we've got the music, and we've got our backgrounds. The next step is to convert these sprites into objects, so we can actually add some events to them and make them do some things in our game. So let's click on the blue ball here and create an object. We will start with the bear, we'll call it obj underscore bear. Okay, make another one, <coughs> obj diamond this time, and make sure we select the diamond. Click OK. Another object, we'll call it the finish line. OBJ finish. And finally, our last object is the wall. So we'll call it OBJ underscore wall. Select the wall, and this time make sure the wall is solid. We don't want our little bear to be able to run through the wall. When he hits the wall, he needs to stop. Okay, so we need to make that wall solid. Okay, so all our objects are now in the game. What we can do next is create our rooms, which is what our levels are going to look like. To do that we press the white box up the top called create a room. I like to make this big so we can see it all. We're going to change the grid size, the snap X and snap Y to 32 by 32 pixels. That way the grid's now the same size as our sprites. Okay, This room is a little bit too big for our maze game, I want to make it a bit smaller. So if we click on, where is it, our settings tab just here. We're going to make it 320 by 320. It's a nice small room. Okay, in backgrounds, if you want, you can choose just a plain background color for the background, or you can use one of the two backgrounds we chose earlier. Then back in the objects tab, we can start to decorate our room now. So holding down shift, I'm going to click and drag to put the wall in. Hey, make yourself a bit of a maze, so your bear has a maze to work his way through. Okay, we'll put the bear in his starting position. We'll put in a few diamonds that he can collect along the way. And we'll put in a finish line somewhere, so I might put it over there. That's our first level. So click the tick when you're happy with that. And let's make our second level. It's going to be very similar. So the snap X and snap Y will be 32 by 32. 
we will have a background in there. I'm going to use world number two, look like that. In our settings tab, we'll change the width and the height of the room to 320 by 320. And in objects, we can start to decorate the room again. Remember, if you make a mistake with your wall, so for example, I do that, I can right click on any mistake and get rid of it. Don't ask me what I'm doing with my design here. Okay. We'll put our bear back in. He can start up. No, I might start him in the bottom again. Put a few diamonds in that he can collect. And a finish line. Okay. So there's our second level all finished. So I'll press the tick when I've done that. Now we're ready to start coding our objects to make them work. If you wanted, you could go into these rooms here. You can rename them, so I might have level 1. Rename that to level 2, just to make it a bit clearer. You can understand it. Okay, so let's go to Object Bear and let's get this bear moving around our maze. To begin with, we need to add an event in. And the events we're going to add in, first of all, are our keyboard events. And we press the left, right, up and down keys, we need our little bear to move in that particular direction. So we'll start with the left key. When we press a mouse, uh, sorry, our left arrow key, first of all, we want to check that our little man, our little bear, is inside the 32 by 32 grid. Okay, so in the control tab, you want to click on this grid, it's called check grid, and we want it to check if it's in 32 by 32 pixel grid. If it is aligned up with that grid, we want the bear to move. So we go back to the Move tab, right click on the first um, bunch of red arrows, which is called Move Fixed, and we want it to move to the left at a speed of 4. We click OK. Now we're going to do this for each keyboard key. So we'll do the right one next. We check that it's lined up in the grid. If it is, then we're going to move it to the right at a speed of 4. Same is going to go for the up key and the down key. And there's our down key. Put in the grid 32 by 32 and we'll move it down. Speed of 4. Okay, so that's how we move with our arrow keys. There's a few other moving um, tools we need to use here. We've got the no key event that we need to put in. So when we're pressing no key at all, we need our bear to stop completely still. So again, we check the grid to make sure he's all right. And we just tell it not to move anywhere by pressing that middle dot and leaving the speed at zero. That says, don't go anywhere. Another time we don't want our bear to go anywhere is when we hit the um, brick wall. So let's add in a collision event now. So when our object bear has a collision with the object wall, we want the same thing to happen. We're going to check the grid is 32 by 32. And we're going to say to our bear, stop moving. Don't move anywhere else. Okay, let's do a quick test run now by pressing the play button at the top. That will load your game up and you should be able to move your bear around your game. When he hits a wall, he'll stop because the wall's solid. We've told him to stop, and we're pressing no key at all, he will go nowhere. Okay, so that's looking good so far. The next thing we're gonna do is go to Object Diamond. So I'm just gonna actually close Object Bear for the time being. In Object Diamond, we're gonna add in an event, and it's gonna be a collision with the bear. So when the bear and the diamond collide, we want those diamonds to disappear. So what we do, First of all, we need to play a sound to say, hey, we've just collected a diamond. The loop will be false. We don't want it to play over and over again. Once we have collected that diamond, we're going to send it or we'll destroy the instance. It's that little trash can icon there in the main one tab. And it will destroy itself. Since we're on object diamond, we want the diamond to destroy itself. We click OK. We could also put in a score. So down in the score tab here, we might get 10 points every time we collect the diamond. And click relative this time. That way the score keeps adding on to the previous score. So instead of restarting at 10 points all the time, it'll keep going up 10, 20, 30, 40, and just keep adding on to the previous score. I might even pick that up and drag it to the top. So we get our points first. 
sound is played next and then finally the diamond disappears. You can click OK on that. Back to our object bear, there's one more collision event we need to do and that's on the finish line. What happens when we hit that finish flag? So let's add an event in, it'll be a collision and it'll be with object finish. So when our bear collides with the finish line, we need to do a few things. In the main one tab, the first thing we want to do is we need to check if there is another level. So this very last icon in main one is called if next room exists. So if there's another level, then we want to go to it. So we have to right click on this one called next room. You can choose what sort of effect you want as the rooms change from one to the other. It doesn't matter which one you choose. So that says if there's another level, then we're going to go to it. But when we get to our last level, we have no more levels to carry on to. So we want to finish our game there and then. Okay, so what we need to do is go down to the control tab and we put in the else button here. So what else happens if we can't go to our next level? This is what we're going to do. We're going to go down and put in a high score menu. So show the high score button. Don't worry about changing colors or anything there. Just click OK. It will look fine. And you can choose what it does from here. Okay, in main one, sorry, main two tab, you have the option of either restarting the game from level one, or you can finish the game altogether. And that's what I'm going to choose. I'm going to choose end game. Okay, so one more time, this says when we hit the finish line, if there's another level, then we're going to go to it. If there isn't another another level, we will show the high score table where the user can type in their high score, and then they will finish the game. We we'll can click OK on that and test that out really quickly. Okay, so from before we should be able to collect diamonds now. We can see our score in the top left corner there going up and we can go to our next level. I won't collect all the diamonds here but I will hit that finish line. There's our high score table. And when we press enter the game closes. So looking good. We're almost finished. One last thing we're going to do is put in some music. So let's go add an event on the bear. And we're going to put in a create event. So when the bear is first created, we want our music to play, our background music. So we right click on our speaker here and we put in our background music and loop will be true. So just in case the song runs out, it will restart and play again. That's all the coding we need for our game. It's as simple as that. The last thing you should do to make an effective game is go over to Game Information here and put in a Help menu. So it's always good to put in a nice big heading that tells you the name of the game. So it could be Maze Game. And you'll have things like instructions, so what you've got to do to achieve success in this game. You could have things like Items to Collect. You could talk about how many points the diamonds are worth. And another good one is control. So what does the user need to press to make this game work? So you'll be talking about the arrow keys that need to be pressed to move the little bear around the page. Okay, once we tick that box, your help menu is saved, and our game is pretty much finished. Now you can't hear the sound through my speakers, but there is sound playing on this game. I can move it around works fine. Okay, if I press F1 for the help menu, up pops the help menu and I can actually see how to play this game. If I press escape, it will take me back to the game. Okay. That's as simple as that. Have fun making that game. When it comes to saving your game, just go to the file menu. You can save as and you can save it as a game maker project where you can come back and edit that game in future. If you would like to take a copy of this game home to play on your Windows computer, you need to create an executable file. Okay, so it's up to you how you save your game. You can either save it as a project to come back to, or you can create an executable file which will let you play it at home on your computer. Have fun!